Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Chrysler 200 Limited. Four doors, five seats in the highly competitive midsize sedan market. This has a pretty aerodynamic design with a drag coefficient of just 0.27. The 200 Limited trim starts at 23,950. As tested we're looking at 27,180. It does feature a nice large trunk with 60-40 split folding rear seats and you also have a temporary spare located underneath. Under the hood is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine, single overhead cam with four valves per cylinder with variable valve timing on the intake. It actually has a pretty sophisticated electro hydraulic system used to operate the intake valves. It features a compression ratio of 10 to one and has 184 horsepower at 6,250 RPM and 173 pound feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. Now glancing for serviceability, we've got our engine coolant here on the left. Our air filter will require tools for access. We've got our engine oil fill and an engine oil dipstick right here. You've got your battery up front and on the driver's side, but you do have easy access to the terminals as well as the battery itself, washer fluid. You've got a simple tab here to access your fuse box and then your brake fluid reservoir. You also do have remote start on the key fob. Okay, so moving on to the interior, comfortable cloth seats, uh, plenty wide and you've got a good amount of space for your legs, they don't really come into contact with anything, so plenty of leg room in here. The cabin itself, everything in here pretty much is just a dark black, but also very simple to use, everything's pretty intuitive, so I do like it for the most part. Um, you've got your automatic windows, you've got your automatic lights, you've got cruise control on the steering wheel and you can select through the menus on this kind of cool looking uh, gauge cluster up here, so you've got the tack on the left, speedometer on the right you can read off your instantaneous fuel economy some trip info including average fuel economy and your speedometer tire pressure uh, different things in there so a good amount of information you have in there you've also got the fuel gauge on your right and the engine coolant temperature on your left so the infotainment system, you got a nice large screen here, which I do like, and actually really intuitive, easy to use, and what I like about it is you can, uh, they also have a knob for tuning as well as volume, so you can select individually one up, one down uh, for different radio stations, things like that, adjust the volume. You also have controls behind the steering wheel to do the same function, so I do like that. You can connect it up to your phone, there's some apps in there, uh, though honestly you're probably just going to end up using Bluetooth on your phone and playing music through that, rather than playing it through the apps, which require connecting to your phone anyways. So checking out the climate control system, pretty simple, easy to understand. You've got your dial in the center for adjusting your fan speed, your two climate control zones, and then the other individual features down here. Now as far as the gear selector, it's just this knob right here and you just place it into whichever gear you'd like to be. And then you also do have an electronic parking brake. As far as storage is concerned, you've got quite a good amount. You've got some in the door here. You've got some underneath there, underneath all of this uh, climate control stuff. You also have your two cup holders here and a nice spot for a phone. And all of this stuff moves back to unveil more storage underneath. And if this is forward, then you also have storage down here as well. And then, of course, the glove box. So a good amount of storage in here, and I do actually like this. I think it's a pretty cool feature that you can move that in and out and have more access below. It also has a hole in here, so if you want to route a cable down into here, uh, up front you can. Okay, moving on to visibility, and this is probably the biggest disadvantage of this vehicle over the competition. The story isn't really that great of one. Uh, you've got a fairly narrow window up front. You've got narrow windows to your right and left. The mirrors are actually pretty narrow as well. They're not that tall. They are pretty wide, so you can see out a good distance and see your blind spot. But for example, this car isn't really set up good for parallel parking. So if you are going to parallel park where you're thinking, okay, you want to know where the front of the vehicle is, you can't actually see it unless you lean forward a good amount to see the hood of the vehicle. When you're looking back, you can't see the trunk at all, so you're going to have to be reliant on the rear view camera, which it does have, so you know that's there. Uh, the resolution of it is not that great, so when you are backing up, the resolution of this camera is pretty poor. It works, it'll get the job done, uh, but it is a little unfortunate because overall visibility, looking out the front to the sides, looking to the rear, it's all fairly constricted, especially looking out the back because you can't even see the trunk, so you don't really know where the rear of the vehicle is. You have to be reliant on that camera. Now, the other thing is these pillars are pretty large so that also obstructs a good amount of your view the a b and c pillars all pretty large so all taking up a good amount of your visibility and i find myself while i'm driving this kind of constantly moving my head around trying to make sure you know nothing's coming in either direction and so you know the visibility overall is not that great of a story to tell 
Sitting in the rear, I'm about 6'1", and I've got the driver's seat adjusted to where I will be driving. As you can see, you know, a decent amount of legroom. It's okay back here, and a good amount of footroom. The thing that is restricted is headroom. My head is basically touching the ceiling in here, and so, you know, as someone who's 6'1", it's not necessarily going to be the most comfortable ride back here. You do have AC vents, and you also do have a cup holder there on the door, as well as you can pull this down. You've got two cup holders in there and some additional storage. Okay, let's go for a test drive. Push button start. Rotate it over into drive. And so with this view, you can probably get a better idea of what I was talking about with this A-pillar. It's just really wide, takes up a good amount of your visibility, and overall your view is fairly narrow. Now as far as how the vehicle drives, it's actually really comfortable and really quiet. You don't hear a lot of road noise, you don't hear a lot of wind noise, and the suspension is very soft, so bumps are absorbed really well, and you don't really notice it all that much. It's just a comfortable, quiet environment. The seats feel good, I like the interior. The steering wheel, as far as responsiveness, it seems like there's a bit of a delay between turning the wheel and then getting the vehicle to actually rotate that direction. Uh, the weight of it feels fine and overall it feels okay, it just doesn't feel exactly responsive. Moving on to the throttle pedal, the mapping for that seems totally fine, uh, very easy to adjust to and you know there's no dead band or anything like that. Once you get on the throttle, easily roll through it. The thing that does get a little strange, this is a 9 speed transmission and so you do get a lot of gear shifts and occasionally it will be uh, fairly jolty most of the time it's pretty smooth if you're light on it or if you're all the way you know flat out it seems to be decently smooth it's somewhere in between where it kind of gets a little bit jerky and it can be a little bit rough transitioning between gears when you do put your foot down all the way there's a noticeable delay and it'll do about one or two gear shifts up and you'll kind of wait and then it'll start to get into the power and the power delivery is smooth uh, not all that much horsepower uh, but you know the torque is there it's smooth delivery it's just that there's a delay once you put your foot down you let the engine get up to the rpm it wants and then it engages the gear now as far as the brake pedal feel it's got a good length of travel to it and the beginning portion uh, doesn't really do all that much so very light braking for the first maybe inch that you press your foot in and then after that it gets a little bit more aggressive and a more linear rate uh, so as you press down on it firmer you'll get more braking action uh, so that initial portion just doesn't do a whole lot um, and so even if you're just sitting at a stoplight and you're kind of lightly holding the brake it will inch forward so it's real light initially and then it gets more aggressive as you get into it getting into the corners Honestly, it doesn't feel all that bad. You do get a decent amount of body roll, and if you push it too hard, you start to run into understeer, but that's to be expected with a sedan like this, so nothing too bad, and honestly, it feels fine going through the corners, uh, even if you are going slightly aggressively. You don't have any way to manually select gears, so it's always just doing that automatically. Um, so, you know, if you do get into a scenario where you're going to be going down a hill for a good amount of time, it does automatically kind of keep it into a lower gear to provide some engine braking, which is nice, uh, but it would be kind of nice to have the ability to select your own gear if you are going downhill and you want to set a certain speed rather than just kind of rely on it and also work your brakes. Okay, let's get a quick 0 to 60 pull in here. I'll come to a complete stop, get on the gas a little bit, and then let go of the brake. And there's 60. So I've got the cruise control set at 65, and the noise levels in here are actually really good. You hear a little bit of road noise and not too much wind noise. We're looking at about 72, 73 decibels, which is on the better side of the vehicles which I've tested. So I've completed my fuel economy test course, 51 miles, and this car is rated 23 in the city, 36 on the highway. As you can see, it achieved 37.6 miles per gallon, so pretty good fuel economy. So overall, I think it's a great car. I think the suspension is good. You know, it absorbs bumps well. It's a really comfortable ride. It's one of the most quiet interiors I've ridden in, which is pretty surprising considering its price range. My biggest complaint is going to be the visibility. I think it could use a little bit of work in that department. And other than that, it's been fine to drive. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.